the octopus, the window, and the branch. Please. Professor Segeiser, uh, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to thank uh, the organization committee for inviting me to talk about endovascular therapy. Title of my talk uh, is The Octopus, the Window, and the Branch. And uh, during my talk, I would like to stress a little bit um, on uh, open repair. Then in the second part, um, I come to the topic of the hybrid procedure. And in the end, I would like to talk a little bit about uh, branch and fenestrated uh, grafts. We heard already um, that uh, toraco abdominal repair has, despite all these improvements in surgical technique and perioperative management, a high uh, morbidity and mortality rate. And despite um, the centers, the excellent centers in Houston, uh, namely Coselli and Safi, uh, the real world data, as you see here in this publication from the US, is around uh, 22% in average. And uh, if we are talking about ruptured uh, toracoabdominal aneurysm, the mortality rate is uh, even higher and also the paraplegia rate. So as you know, uh, groundbreaking uh, developments coming up in the early 90s, this was uh, the endovascular therapy uh, first described by Volodos. And uh, when uh, we look to the literature and see what kind of indication we have for the TVAR procedure, uh, we find um, this uh, consensus document uh, published in the annals in 2008. And when we look at the evidence level for TVAR procedure, you see um, that the highest evidence level has um, uh, patients with acute complicated type B dissection. Um, the evidence level is lower in uh, descending uh, aneurysms and for toracoabdominal aneurysm, the, the evidence level is um, even lower. But um, these data were uh, most recently from uh, 2006, 2007. And so uh, we as the vascular domain of the EX uh, working in the moment together with the European Society of Cardiology on a new consensus uh, paper for uh, TIVA procedure. So now I would like to stress a little bit on the hybrid uh, TVAR. You know that some uh, patients are unsuitable for open repair because these patients are, have severe comorbidities and are unfit uh, patients, or for classical EVAR alone, because these patients have an inadequate distal landing zone and a distal vessel involvement. Therefore, the hybrid TVAR was introduced. Here you see the first publications in 1999. Uh, first described for type 4 aneurysms. Um, very briefly to the concept of the hybrid uh, TVAR. First of all, uh, the first step is uh, the revascularization, the debranching and rerouting uh, of uh, the visceral branches. And then the second step, um, the uh, TVAR procedure um, has to be performed. You can do that either in a, a simultaneous setting, but uh, as we heard in the, in the previous talks, um, this has some drawbacks. Um, the other concept I personally prefer is to do it in a, uh, in a two-step, if ever possible, and the patient is not symptomatic. The um, um, different uh, s surgical access uh, have been described and um, here you see one example, if ever possible, you should use the infrarenal aorta as a supply vessel. Um, here uh, with a bifurcated inverted graft with additional uh, conduits uh, to the SMA and the celiac trunk. And um, if that is not possible, um, you can uh, use a retroperitoneal exposure, for example here um, the left iliac artery as a supply vessel for the visceral arteries or even both iliac arteries uh, here with an uh, inverted bifurcated graft. Second step, as I mentioned before, are uh, the stand graft selection. We normally use uh, commercial available non-fenestrated non-brand stand graft according to the length, the cry diameter, anatomical findings, and of course the underlying aortic arch uh, pathology. Here you see the stand grafts available on the market. <coughs> um, some warts um, 
from the technical consideration in the hybrid TVAR, um, I normally use uh, rapid pacing for stand deployment if I'm quite near uh, the arch vessels. I do, in all these cases, CSF drainage, um, also uh, uh, monitoring of the spinal cord with TCMAP and SSCP. I use uh, uh, moderate uh, hypothermia by not rewarming the patient. And of course, we heard about uh, post-operative uh, sufficient spinal cord perfusion to prevent delayed uh, deficits. I looked to the literature and did a literature review. And you see here in this uh, 15 publication, I include only papers with more than five cases. Uh, the total caseload are 335 cases, mean follow-up uh, 16 uh, months with a 30-day mortality rate of 15%. Uh, overall mortality 21%, paraplegia 4%, and paraparesis 3%. So when we compare these results with open versus uh, hybrid TVAR, you see that uh, despite the um, excellent centers in, in Houston, the overall mortality rate and paraplegia rate are quite similar. But don't uh, forget these uh, groups are not really comparable. Don't compare apples with oranges in this instead because the hybrid group are, have much more severe comorbidities. So in the last part of my talk, um, I would like to stress on the uh, branch and fenestrated graft. You know that uh, these grafts are all custom designed uh, to the individual anatomical situation of the patient. Uh, only one company is available in, 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 uh, on the market so far, so the planning and producing period is uh, normally three to six months. Um, I hear it in some centers uh, sometimes up to nine months. Um, the other aspect is um, that the fenestration, you see the fenestration here with uh, the gold markers, um, is quite difficult to, to achieve the position of these prostheses and uh, the branch grafts. Uh, again, here uh, with the gold marker, I will show you some interoperative uh, slides later on. Uh, the branch graft uh, secure this problem uh, much nicer and secure the graft in the area of the visceral arteries, but also this uh, procedure is hard to achieve, especially in large aneurysm uh, with thrombus in the aneurysm sac. Prerequisites for uh, the total TVAR, of course, um, the, the aneurysm uh, neck should be uh, less than 42 millimeters, the bifurcation more than 20 millimeters, iliac diameters, uh, in the area of 8 to 24 millimeters, and the angulation, as you see here, uh, should be less than 40, uh, 40 degrees. Uh, for the procedure itself, you need a cauterization of the arch and the iliac um, uh, vessels, uh, either from the subclavian artery or uh, over the groin. <coughs> Here is the principle of the proce uh, procedure. You see here um, in the middle, uh, you have the branch uh, graft. You must use normally a proximal and a distal extension uh, of the graft, then uh, the cauterization of the prosthesis and um, the side uh, branches as well as the, as the visceral arteries. And then to complete the procedure, uh, you have to use the covered um, grafts as you see here in this drawing. Uh, let me uh, talk a little bit the access. Uh, you can use a cut down, of course, uh, for this uh, procedure, or here uh, also a total uh, percutaneous approach, first described by Anderson, 2005. Uh, here you see the, the multiple cauterization of the left groin. A uh, new sheet uh, is now on the market. Uh, this is a uh, so-called uh, check flow sheet. You see that this sheet has uh, four sheet valves, and over these sheet valves, you can access this uh, big sheet with four other um, uh, smaller sheets. This, uh, again, is uh, uh, showing the cauterization, the principle of uh, the prosthesis over this uh, sheet here and uh, over there to the visceral and renal arteries. And this, uh, this is also shown in this picture here. Uh, some interoperative uh, pictures. 
Here uh, you see um, all the gold markers. The fenestration is nicely seen here. Over the subclavian artery, a catheterization of the celiac trunk. Over the left groin, catheterization of the right uh, renal artery. And to complete the procedure, we normally uh, use the advent uh, covered stand graft, as you see here, uh, to complete the procedure. And this is the final result uh, for a type 4 torque of abdominal aneurysm. And this is uh, another example for type 2 aneurysm. Um, I would like, I'm quite proud to present the results uh, from Torcello in Münster, Germany. Um, in Germany, he is one of the most experienced ones uh, with the biggest series <coughs> for total T bar. You see the surgical time uh, around two hours, quite acceptable. Uh, length of stay less than seven days, no conversion, some um, access uh, complication, uh, one acute renal failure, 30-day uh, mortality none, persistent endoleak, surprisingly none in this series. Uh, the late results, up to 52 months, um, aneurysm-related death, one patient, late mortality, six, uh, claudication, one patient, hemodialysis uh, in the late follow-ups, three, visceral uh, ischemia, none, and secondary intervention in seven patients. Uh, other series um, have quite similar uh, experience. You see the mortality rate. Uh, for this group, five to up to nine percent, with a very low uh, paraplegia rate, uh, none to three percent. Uh, this is a uh, two review article, and also in this uh, review article for fenestrated graft, you see a uh, 30 day mortality rate, uh, 0.8 to three percent. And um, this is a, a review article for fenestrated and branch graft, uh, total case load uh, 340 cases. Um, surgical success, 96%, uh, 30-day mortality, 2%, mean follow-up, uh, 21%, overall, 15%, uh, uh, rupture of the aneurysm, 0.4%, endoleak, 14%, reintervention, 18 and renal failure, uh, one patient with hemodialysis. Uh, vessels, uh, the, the target vessels, uh, patency rate is uh, 93%, so quite good. Uh, results uh, also in the uh, midterm follow up. So, I uh, would like to summarize the advantages of these uh, toraco abdominal high um, uh, branch graft uh, no laparotomy, no toracotomy, and no aortic cross clamping is needed for this procedure. Cardiovascular instability, hypothermia, coagulopathy, blood loss, vessel, and spinal cord ischemia are definitely minimized. Uh, we have uh, seen uh, only a few pulmonary complications and cardiac arrhythmias are also very little. Uh, patients with numerous comorbidities can be treated with this uh, treatment and patients have definitely less pain. Of course, uh, all procedures have advantages and disadvantages. Also for the total T-bar, uh, the limitations are uh, high friction and resistance in the sheets especially when we have uh, the situation of uh, kinking of the iliac vessels. Also, the pull-out forces uh, is quite heavy if the distance between the graft and the wrestle arteries is too long. And uh, we do not know too much about the stand fractures of the bare or the covered stands uh, in the wrestle arteries so far. Uh, disadvantages, um, of course, this procedure is very cost extensive. Um, it's a complicated technique. You need a hybrid suite for, for sure for this uh, complicated uh, uh, total T-bar procedure. We do not know, uh, have uh, long-term results so far. Um, I, I, I mentioned before that uh, stand rotation uh, could be a problem with still RD occlusion during deployment. And um, we do not have uh, preservation of the blood flow to the segmental artery with the potential risk of spinal cord ischemia. Um, I also uh, mentioned before that device must be specially adapted uh, to the anatomical situation of the, uh, the, the patient. Therefore, a symptomatic patient could not um, um, be treated with these uh, prosthesis and uh, perforation of small axis vessel could be an issue. So um, more or less on the end of my talk, um, I would like um, 
to ask uh, which is uh, the possibilities and um, what would be the right uh, selection criteria. And uh, therefore, I, I like um, this uh, publication from Michael Jacobs in Maastricht Aachen. Um, he described in his uh, publication that uh, the, the ideal situation uh, for uh, these kind of patients would be if we could um, uh, offer our patient all three parts or three types of procedure. I mean, uh, for example, if the patient had a, a, a good physiological uh, situation, is uh, no severe comorbidity, the patient should be opened, uh, repaired with a thoracoabdominal replacement. Uh, if the situation is that the patient had a good anatomical uh, situation, the total, t uh, the total endovascular repair would be an option for these patients. If uh, the situation or the patient has a moderate uh, physiology and a moderate anatomical situation, a hybrid repair uh, could be recommended. And uh, in the worst uh, situation, uh, if the patient had a bad anatomical and bad physiology uh, situation, uh, no treatment should be done at all. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to conclude my talk. The hybrid TVAR has uh, similar morbidity and mortality rates when compared to open repair, as we saw it in the numbers before. However, we have to keep in mind that this patient uh, selected for the hybrid TVAR uh, has significant more severe comorbidities. Uh, second, uh, the hybrid TVAR is a treatment option or could be a treatment option uh, for patient unfit for open repair, uh, aneurysm uh, anatomy unsuitable for total TVAR, and symptomatic uh, TAA patients. Uh, third, the total TVAR is improving uh, over the last five years and will likely be employed in the future to treat certain uh, uh, thoracoabdominal patients. Four, uh, total TIVA was fenestrated and branch graft have, uh, has a low morbidity and mortality rate compared uh, to open uh, repair and hybrid TVAR. And uh, for these fenestrated grafts, it is absolutely crucial to follow the status of the patient and the standard vessel to evaluate the long-term results of these uh, procedure. So um, as a take-home match um, from my personal standpoint, uh, what's out, in my opinion, this is um, um, open repair in every patient. Uh, what's in, in my uh, opinion, is um, uh, individual approach uh, depending on the patient's comorbidity and anatomical situation where we can offer our patient the open repair, the hybrid uh, TVAR and the total endovascular repair in one hand. And also, in, um, in my uh, opinion, is uh, the team approach, where we as a surgeon work together with our colleagues uh, from the radiologist and uh, the cardiologist and perform this procedure together in our hybrid suites. So thanks again for the invitation, and I'm most happy to answer your question now.